Okay, today I will tell you guys about a place that have seen some terrific battles of World War I. Ypres, also known as the Battle of Ypres. And the whole Battle of Ypres uh, existed of five battles that took around four years. But first, we'll do a recap of World War I itself. World War I, also known as the Great War, began in 1914 after the assassination of Archduke Franz Ferdinand of Austria. His murder developed into a war across Europe that lasted until 1918. The four central powers, Germany, Austria-Hungary, Bulgaria and the Ottoman Empire formed a alliance. And they seeked war with the Allied powers. And they were Great Britain, France, Russia, Italy, Japan and later the United States of America. On the Western Front, the Germans started a operation called the Schlieffenplan to encircle the French army by bypassing them through neutral Belgium and advance towards Paris. But the Belgian army put up an unexpected fierce resistance against the invading Germans. And finally, the Germans reached northern France. But there is still a small area of Belgium not yet occupied. The Allies give it their all to keep that small last part of Belgium out of German hands. The German advance gets to a halt and both sides get into a stalemate. And both started to dig in. The Allies and Germany are now trying to outflank each other towards the northwestern coast. This is also called the race to the sea. And here, in the last occupied part of Belgium, lies a village near the front line. And that village is called Ypres. The British and French troops entered the area of Ypres around the 13th of October 1914, already encountering the German army further to the east. And from January 1915, a stalemate situation developed between the Allies and the German army. The Allies sat firm in a defensive semi-circular front line. They pushed a bulge east of Ypres into the German front line, which is called in military terms a salient. To the advantage of the Allies, it forces the Germans to provide extra manpower to hold a longer section of the front line. But a disadvantage for the Allies is when the Germans are attacking from multiple directions which the Germans did. Here at the north of Ypres lays a small village called Langemark and Langemark uh, saw some terrific action during the first battle of Ypres. Some regiments even lost around 70% of their strength. That's a crazy number to think about. And the, all the German soldiers who fell during the battle of Langemark are laying here now at this war cemetery in Langemark. On the east side of Ypres, the Germans managed to push through the British defensive line at the village of Geluveld. But a successful, heroic counter-attack with a bayonet charge from the 2nd Battalion, the Worcestershire Regiment, recaptured the village and restored the British defensive line. At this battle, a young soldier named Adolf Hitler shot his first bullet in World War I. This was the first real-life action that Hitler had in the First World War. When he charged the British position, men were falling down dead around him, which shaped his perspective of the war immediately. He learns this absolute heartlessness and roughlessness, the lack of compassion and the lack of any soft of human feelings in this battle. The Germans were just getting mowed down by machine gun fire and rifle fire. Three out of four men wouldn't survive this attack. On 
the southeast of Ypres lays a 60 meter high man-made hill called Hill 60. Hill 60 was the scene of bitter fighting in April 1915. The high ground of the hill was held by the German troops from the 10th of December 1914 after they had captured this area from the French army. German domination of this high ground enabled them to make the life very difficult for the Allied troops in this part of the Ypres salient. When the British 28th Infantry Division uh, took over this position from the French army, in February 1915, it was decided to retake the position on Hill 60. And because of this decision, the British started for the first time in the war a new concept. And that new concept was offensive mining. Offensive mining or mine warfare are the terms used to describe the digging of tunnels under the enemy's line in order to place a huge amount of explosives to destroy trenches or a key location. On the 17th of April 1915, five mines were exploded under the German positions on Hill 60. The top of the hill was literally blown off. The British troops then attacked and took the hill. And over the following four days, the bridge fought off fierce German counterattacks. And on the 22nd of April, the battle subsided with the British still in control of the hill. But on that same day, in the north of Ypres, started the Second Battle of Ypres. The Second Battle of Ypres began in the northern sector of the Ypres salient. It started on the same day when the Battle of Hill 60 ended on the 22nd of April 1915. It was a sunny and warm spring afternoon when it all of a sudden was shattered at around 5 p.m. A new devastating weapon was used in the, for the first time in the war. A big yellow thick cloud of poisonous gas came over the ground and into the trenches. Behind that cloud was the German 4th Army preparing a surprise attack against two French divisions holding the Allied front line. The deadly effect of the poisonous cloud was carried on a gentle breeze towards the French troops. And as a result of its devastating effect on the French troops, the German infantry made a significant advance into the Allied territory within a few hours. During the following four weeks after the surprise attack, the Allied forces fought to hold off the successful German advance and regained a tiny bit of ground that was lost at the north of Ypres. The battle ended on the 25th of May 1915. The Battle of Messine was an offensive by the British 2nd Army against the German front line on the high ground of Whitshade Messine Ridge, south of Ypres. Planned from 1916, the Battle of Messine was to be a prelude to the 3rd Battle of Ypres which had the high grounds of Passchendaele Ridge as its objective. The objective was to remove the German army from its domination of the high ground of the ridge south of Ypres, which they had held since October 1914. A successful operation would mean a breakthrough of the German line and strengthen the British front line, thereby reducing the manpower needed to man it and place the Allies in an improved position southeast of Ypres. They would then be in a better position for a planned attack at the end of July 1917 towards the east. From the early spring of 1916, mining operations were carried out to dig tunnels and lay the explosives for a total of 21 mines underneath the German trenches. The troops involved in the mining were military tunneling companies and engineers from different countries. And then, in the early hours of the attack, on the 7th of June, 
19 out of the 21 mines were detonated at 3.10 a.m. The German defenders were shocked and hurtled into the air along with concrete bunkers, equipment and tons of earth. 19 enormous craters were left after the debris had crashed back down again. Even a dull rumble from the explosions was said to have been heard all the way in London. Right after the explosion, British, Irish, Australian and New Zealand infantry carried out an assault on what was left of the remaining German defences. More than 7000 German soldiers were taken prisoner. The Germans kept counterattacking after the Allies took the German positions, but they were held off. After having successfully secured the high ground of the Witch Shades Machine Ridge in the Battle of Machines, the plan for the next operation was to advance against the German front line east and northeast of Ypres, to also reach the heights of Passchendaele. The British intention was to continue their push westwards, to cut off the German forces to the ports of Oostende and Zeebrugge, which were used by the Germans as bases for U-boats. In Flanders, the Third Battle of Ypres was launched on the 31st of July. The British 5th Army advanced in the northeastern direction away from its position near Ypres, with the Passchendaele Ridge in its sights. The French 1st Army was on its left, and the British 2nd Army was on its right, holding the ground won during the Battle of Messines a few weeks earlier. Some ground, approximately 2 miles, was gained on the first day, but that night heavy rain began to fall and the ground all around the British attackers quickly turned into mud. Beaten up by the artillery bombardment of the German front line, the ground the British were now having to advance across was badly damaged and was filling up with rainwater which could not drain away through the heavy clay soil. Due to persistent rain over the next few weeks, the whole operation became literally bogged down in thick, sticky Flanders mud. The conditions were so bad that men and horses simply disappeared into the water-filled craters. And on the other side, the German defensive line had been fortified during the previous months in their expectation of an attack here. The British advance turned into a battle of eight phases, inching closer to the Passchendaele Ridge in a series of actions with limited objectives. The capture of Passchendaele Ridge eventually took around 8 weeks to achieve and from both sides they lost around 200 to 400,000 men. Well, that sums it up to around 800,000 casualties on the third battle alone of Ypres. But historians still debate the exact numbers of how many casualties this uh, third battle had. The great tragedy for the British Army and the Imperial Forces of Australia, New Zealand and Canada, who suffered so many losses in the fight for the few miles from Ypres to the Passchendaele Ridge, is that only five months later, almost all of the ground gained in the mud and horror of the battles for Passchendaele was recaptured by the German Army during its April offensive in 1918. Formerly called the Third Battle of Ypres, the battle which began on the 31st of July, often is more commonly known by the Battle of Passchendaele. Most of the soldiers who died in the whole Battle of Ypres were uh, killed in the Third Battle of Ypres itself. And a lot of remains are still missing of soldiers and a lot of soldiers are missing. And uh, even when they find uh, some remains of a soldier today, they can't really identify it. So there are still a lot of names not uncovered. In the early morning, on the 9th of April, the German 4th and 6th armies launched the Flanders Offensive, Operation George Jet, the second in the planned series of attacks on the Allied front for spring 1918. South of Ypres, the Portuguese troops holding the Allied front in Artois were pushed westwards by 4 miles. And in the south of the Ypres salient sector, the British 2nd army was also pushed westwards, losing its hold of the Messine Ridge the Witchshade Ridge and the Messines villages, 
which had been captured from the German army in June 1917, just under a year before. The village of Passchendaele, captured by the Allies after such hard fighting during the Third Battle of Ypres, was retaken by the German army on the 16th of April. South of Ypres, the German advance was held at Camel Hill, which is in Dutch Camelberg. However, a German attack on Camel Hill on the 25th of April succeeded in pushing the French troops who recently arrived in the area as reinforcements off this important high ground. The Georgette operation continued for another four days, but was terminated on the 29th of April with no more significant German gains and without the capture of Hasebroek. The 4th Battle of Ypres, also known as the Battle of Lys, was comprised of seven phases. And after the battle, it ended again in a stalemate. This last push from the Allies is known as the Advance in Flanders. Unofficially, it's sometimes called the Fifth Battle of Ypres. On the 28th of September 1918, the Allied Army Group of Flanders attacked and broke through the thin, exhausted, unsupplied German front lines towards the north, east, and south of the town of Ypres. The attack was led by King Albert I of Belgium. The casualties of this battle was minimum compared to the previous battle. Uh, the Belgian and British forces lost around four and a half thousand soldiers. And the process of the advance was significant, recapturing a lot of ground that was previously lost again by the Germans, including the heights at the Passchendaele and Messines. The Allied advance kept pushing the German army further away from Ypres and the destruction left in the area from four years of heavy fighting. Two months later, the Germans surrendered. And finally, after five years, the bloodiest war the world had ever seen was over. Okay, I want to thank you guys for watching this uh, documentary about uh, the Battle of Ypres. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I put a lot of effort and a lot of work uh, in this documentary. So, uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next episode. Salute.